Throughout history, the allure of wealth has often driven individuals towards dark and illicit deeds, spawning the sinister phenomenon of organized crime. Among the most infamous of these criminal enterprises is the Sicilian Mafia, known among its members as Cosa Nostra, meaning Our Thing. Renowned for its involvement in protection racketeering, drug trafficking, and various other illegal enterprises spanning Italy, the United States, and beyond, the Sicilian Mafia has left an indelible mark on the annals of crime. While popular culture frequently portrays them at the pinnacle of their power during the mid-20th century, delving into their earliest origins unveils a history that predates the cinematic depictions found in classics like The Godfather and Goodfellas. In 1972, the esteemed Italian journalist Luigi Barzini offered a poignant assessment of Sicily, describing it as ungovernable due to its inhabitants' long-standing distrust of written laws. Instead, they governed themselves through informal means, fostering a culture that often led to injustice and stagnation. This defiance of authority can be traced back centuries, as Sicily's tumultuous history has been punctuated by waves of foreign dominion, including Greeks, Carthaginians, Romans, Byzantines, Arabs, Vikings, Normans, Germans, and Spaniards. By the turn of the 19th century, Sicily found itself under the rule of the French Bourbon kings, who upheld a feudal system characterized by the concentration of land ownership in the hands of the Catholic Church and feudal barons. However, the winds of change began to blow in 1812 with the abolition of primogeniture, leading to the gradual transfer of land ownership from the aristocracy to the peasantry. This transition accelerated in 1860 when General Giuseppe Garibaldi spearheaded a campaign to liberate Sicily ushering in the island's annexation into the Kingdom of Italy. With the emergence of a unified Italian state, the old feudal order crumbled, paving the way for a seismic shift towards capitalism. The once exclusive domains of the church and nobility were redistributed among the masses, resulting in a tenfold increase in land ownership among the peasantry. Small farms, grazing lands, lemon groves, and vineyards proliferated across the Sicilian landscape, heralding a new era of socioeconomic transformation. Yet amidst this upheaval, the seeds of organized crime found fertile ground to flourish. As traditional power structures faltered, criminal syndicates capitalized on the vacuum of authority, weaving themselves into the fabric of Sicilian society. Thus, the origins of the Mafia are intricately intertwined with the shifting sands of history, a testament to humanity's capacity for both adaptation and exploitation in the pursuit of power and prosperity. Before Italy embarked on its path to modernization, the vast feudal land holdings of barons provided them with the resources and manpower necessary to ensure the protection of their properties. Similarly, the immensely wealthy and influential Catholic clergy wielded considerable influence over their domains. However, this equilibrium did not extend to the peasant-owned small estates that now constituted the majority of Sicilian land. In the aftermath of Italy's annexation of Sicily in 1860, resistance to Italian rule and laws manifested in populist uprisings that persisted until 1876. These violent upheavals exacerbated the region's instability, plunging many into poverty and desperation. Starving peasants, unable to sustain themselves, resorted to theft from the newly established landowners. Unlike the feudal barons who maintained private armies, these small landowners relied on federal soldiers and policemen for protection. However, the government's forces were ill-equipped to monitor the vast expanse of private plots amidst widespread unrest. Consequently, the Sicilian countryside became a breeding ground for lawlessness and exploitation. For those with a penchant for business and a tolerance for violence, late 19th century Sicily offered unprecedented opportunities for exploitation. With law enforcement presence virtually non-existent, landowners were compelled to hire private thugs to safeguard their property. These hired gunmen soon realized their newfound authority and exploited it, coercing landowners into their protection schemes under threat of violence. Anthropologist Anton Bloch characterized the Mafia's modus operandi as the private use of unlicensed violence as a means of control in the public arena. From the 1860s onwards, this became the dominant method of governance in Sicily, with various factions of Cosa Nostra wielding significant influence. Although the clandestine nature of organized crime makes it challenging to quantify its scope, 
By 1865, the Mafia had entrenched itself in Sicilian society, particularly in the western regions around Palermo. Accounts of their activities during this period abound, with the extent of their reach first mentioned in Niccolo Turisi Colonna's 1864 publication, Public Safety in Sicily, which referred to a sect of thieves with connections across the island without explicitly using the term Mafia. Niccolo Turisi Colonna emerges from history not just as an Italian patriot but also as a steadfast proponent of law and order, qualities despised by the criminals lurking in Sicily's shadows. Surviving a brazen assassination attempt a year prior, where armed assailants ambushed his carriage on a rural road outside Palermo, Colonna's narrow escape fueled his determination to expose Sicily's burgeoning underworld. In his seminal work, Colonna shed light on the sinister powers wielded by the Mafia, describing them as a sect of thieves that operated with impunity, evading law enforcement and subverting the judicial system through coercion and intimidation. He chillingly revealed that approaching a military policeman meant certain execution, a tactic employed to instill fear and enforce the Mafia's rule of humility, demanding unwavering allegiance from the populace. Far from mere extortionists, Cosa Nostra had metamorphosed into a formidable cult, entwining its tentacles deep within Sicilian society. Among the various sectors dominated by the Mafia, lemon groves held particular prominence. Introduced by the Arabs in the 9th century, lemons had become Sicily's prized export by the 19th century, with millions of crates shipped annually to destinations like New York. However, their susceptibility to sabotage, with even minor alterations in soil acidity spelling disaster, made them prime targets for mafia exploitation. One poignant illustration of this exploitation is the saga of Dr. Gaspar Galati, who inherited the Fondo Riella, a four-hectare lemon grove near Palermo. Situated squarely within mafia territory, the estate came with a legacy of intimidation. Galati's brother-in-law, the previous owner, succumbed to a fatal heart attack after receiving death threats. Galati soon encountered the machinations of the mafia firsthand when the estate's overseer, Benedetto Carollo, sabotaged operations and pilfered resources. Recognizing the threat, Galati dismissed Carollo, triggering a series of retaliatory acts Influential figures, presumably coerced or bribed by the Mafia, pressured Galati to reinstate Carollo. Undeterred, Galati stood his ground, prompting the Mafia to resort to violence. On July 2nd, Galati's replacement overseer fell victim to a brutal assassination. Galati's attempts to seek justice were futile, as corrupt authorities turned a blind eye. Threatening letters soon arrived, warning of dire consequences unless Carollo was reinstated. Fearing for his family's safety, Galati abandoned the Fondo Riella, relinquishing his property to the clutches of the Mafia as he sought refuge in Naples. The saga of Dr. Galati epitomizes the Mafia's stranglehold over Sicilian society, a tale of intimidation, corruption, and the brutal subjugation of those who dared to defy their tyranny. Dr. Galati's written testimony serves as a poignant exemplar of the early workings of the Sicilian Mafia, an intricate web of clandestine operations orchestrated by shadowy figures, compelling non-compliant landowners to submit through subterfuge or the specter of violence. The Mafia faction that targeted Galati was centered in the village of Uditore, where, amidst a modest population of 800, a staggering 23 individuals met their demise in the violent year of 1874 alone, an ominous testament to the consequences of defying Mafia authority. While Galati's ordeal stands as but one narrative, it mirrors countless others unfolding in lemon groves, farms, and hamlets across Sicily during the latter half of the 19th century. The 1870s witnessed not only a steady ascent in mafia power, but also the crystallization of their rituals, many of which endure to this day. In 1875, the chief of police in Palermo documented the initiation rites of the mafia, wherein prospective members pledged their allegiance through a ritualistic act of blood, smearing their finger over the image of a Christian saint before incinerating the symbol, an oath sealing their loyalty and marking the demise of all betrayers to Cosa Nostra. Another sacred doctrine that had emerged in preceding decades was omerta, derived from the Sicilian word umiltà, signifying humility. This code of silence bound all mafiosi to never divulge their affiliations under pain of death, shrouding their activities in secrecy. 
What originated as a loose coalition of opportunistic thugs had metamorphosed into an insidious entity born from the turmoil of Sicily's upheaval. A covert society woven together by blood ties whose influence permeated the lives of countless individuals, ensnaring men, women, and children alike in its dark embrace. The 1880s marked a significant expansion of power for Cosa Nostra. With Niccolo Turisi Colonna, the very man who had initially brought public attention to the Mafia two decades earlier, ascending to the position of mayor of Palermo in 1881. Despite his public facade as a vehement opponent of Sicily's criminal overlords, Colonna was alleged to have been bought off by the very individuals who had attempted to assassinate him years prior. Accusations swirled of a corrupt mayor presiding over a corrupt city, shielding mafiosi from justice and even appointing a mafia member as chief of police. Colonna's case was just one instance of the Mafia's infiltration into public service. Their adeptness at co-opting powerful politicians became a cornerstone of their strategy in the ensuing years, facilitating their organizational growth. Their influence was so pervasive that a correspondent for the Times likened them to an intangible sect, with an organizational prowess comparable to that of the Jesuits or Freemasons, yet shrouded in even greater secrecy. The period between the 1880s and the 1930s witnessed a mass exodus of one million Sicilians to America, accompanied by the migration of Mafia operatives. The Prohibition era of the 1920s provided fertile ground for Mafia expansion in the United States, as they capitalized on the lucrative trade of bootleg liquor, subsequently diversifying into prostitution and narcotics. Although the American Cosa Nostra operated independently from their Sicilian counterparts, they maintained adherence to the same rituals of secrecy and violence. Sicily remained firmly in the grip of Mafia factions until the watershed Maxi Trials of 1986 to 1992, during which 475 high-ranking Mafiosi were apprehended, tried, and incarcerated by the Italian authorities. These trials, touted as the largest in world history, necessitated the construction of a fortified courtroom to accommodate the sheer scale of proceedings, with armed guards stationed at every juncture to deter potential Mafia interference. The Maxi Trials marked the definitive end of over a century of Cosa Nostra dominance over Sicily. From humble origins as hired muscle, the Sicilian Mafia burgeoned amidst the turmoil of political unrest, peasant desperation, and the complicity of influential figures motivated by greed. While their apex of global influence may have been reached in the United States throughout the 20th century, it was their 19th century predecessors who held Sicily in a vice of fear, laying the groundwork for iconic figures of organized crime such as Al Capone, Frank Costello, and Henry Hill. As our exploration of criminal syndicates continues, stay tuned for our forthcoming video delving into the origins of the infamous Yakuza. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and activate notifications to catch all the latest updates.